Amen. Amen. His grace and mercy will carry us through. Amen. Through this journey in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's be seated. It's time to listen to the oh. National Choir Administration. Oh.
Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that beautiful rendition from the National Choir. May God continue to use you for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something is going to happen this evening again. And that thing is that is going to happen will happen upon you. And I will declare to you once again that the fire shall fall upon you. Holy Ghost fire will manifest its power upon your life. The ministers are not saying amen. I don't know whether they don't believe with me. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I bet say, I want to share me with you today. The fire will fall upon the ministers in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to declare to you once again tonight. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. The glory of God shall descend upon this tabernacle. God has prepared a servant that is going to use in this session. Most of us who are workers, we will know him very well. He is a minister of the gospel. He is a trainer. A mentor. We've been going together to our various assemblies in the country. We went to Potako together. And then um, he has been with us in Lagos. At the camp here. And recently we went to Adoikiti together. You will think that this pastor is a pastor of new creation gospel mission. Yes, indeed, he's a pastor in new creation gospel mission. Because he is a part and pastor of the mission. And God will continue to uphold him in Jesus' name. Amen. He is the general overseer of open Bible gospel ministry. He is an author, a preacher of the gospel, a teacher of the word of God. And tonight, God is going to use him mightily. In person of Pastor Femi Okpeolu. Your hand for Jesus Christ. Your hand for Jesus. Your beautiful hand for Jesus. Hand for Jesus. appreciate the honor. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank 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 you. Can we bow our heads to pray? Our Father and our God, we appreciate you. Thank you for the privilege that we have tonight to share with your people. We ask that you will prosper your word. We ask that you will give us spiritual words to explain spiritual truths. We ask that you will give us faith in the heart of your people to receive it. Amen. Let your word not be difficult to explain. Amen. Let it not be difficult to understand. Amen. Give us the grace to go work with them. Amen. We pray that your word will move freely in this auditorium tonight. Amen. It will not be hindered. Amen. We ask that you will honor and you will confirm your word. Amen. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'm glad and excited to be here today. You know, me don't let you want to I really want to appreciate the leadership of this ministry. I want to appreciate our general overseer. And my father and the Lord that just finished speaking now. I'm sure that I'm sure that several of you don't know who is who is introducing because even me, I don't know who is introducing anyway. Okay, but I want to appreciate. I want to appreciate the privilege that I have to share with us on this exalted pulpit tonight. I 
Actually, it's a privilege to it's a privilege to come to uh, to be asked to come and share with us. And I'm no longer well. The only thing I can say of myself is that I'm no longer guest again. I'm 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 you call it a, a stakeholder in this ministry. Ah, uh, See, share there'll be no need for introduction anyway because you don't introduce a man who come back to his house is it needful okay. quickly i will be sharing with us tonight life on what i call take heed take heed as we follow Jesus as believers there is need for us to take heed actually our following Jesus is not a careless thing it's not a casual thing it's not something we do leaving our mind behind anytime I have the possibility of going with my wife to the market usually I leave my mind behind at home uh, because market is where I hate to go. So anytime I'm going to market with her, usually my mind is not in that market. My mind is somewhere else. So even when she's asking me question in the market i'll say hey, hey, we, what did you say what did you just say now but my mom is not there oh, you see we can't follow jesus like that when a man is following jesus that following will take his total concentration you will follow Jesus with your spirit, with your soul, and with your mind. Like Jesus said in the book of Luke, in the book of Mark 12, 29 and 30. Yeah, you you the Lord, your God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your strength, with all your mind, and with all your soul. But we are in a dangerous time today. Where people are following Jesus absent mindedly. They are following Jesus not because of Jesus. They are not following. They are not following Christ for Christ's sake. Uh, they are following Jesus for several other things. And that's a very dangerous thing to do. And that's why we need to take heed. In our discipleship process of following Jesus. The instruction to take heed is not what any man can ignore. It's one of the most serious admonitions, one of the most serious instructions that God is giving to us in the scriptures. Okay, so to take means to own, to possess. Latin, uh, Latin, to make it your own. Latin, so the Okay, so anytime you see the word "take heed" in the scriptures, he's saying that this instruction is for you. 
so you have to take it first you have to personalize it first it's not an instruction that you just pass to somebody else it's not an instruction that is needed for the members and does not concern the pastor. It's not an instruction that is needful for a disciple that is not important to the apostles. It is a very serious instruction to all of us. Such that even if a man will pass it, if a man will pass it to his congregation. It will first have to own it first. So if a man is already saying that this instruction to take it is not it's not for me. If he's saying I'm not included in this instruction. Because he's the one that is doing the preaching as I'm doing it now. That's already a dangerous thing to, to think. If a man thinks that because I am already a D.O., I am already a pastor. If I'm already the choir master. If I'm already the pastor's wife. Then this instruction is probably not for me. Maybe it's for people who are just coming to know the Lord. But not so. As we see, the Holy Ghost instructs us tonight. I'm praying that all of us at whatever level of growth and spirituality we will first receive this instruction and make it our own in the name of Jesus we actually know that men who took this instruction for granted in the scriptures men who ignore it men who take it carelessly they didn't really have good story to tell at the end of their life well, I'm praying that all of us including me we are not going to be part of this kind of people in the name of Jesus Okay, so, so take heed is a warning it's an admonition to be careful to pay close attention to what matters in our discipleship work with Jesus calling our attention to pay attention to what matters as we follow Jesus and I hope you know that all of us are followers of Jesus first before you are a pastor. Before a man will become anything, he is first a follower of Jesus. He is first a disciple of Jesus. Even the apostles didn't start they are journey as apostles of Jesus. They started as disciples of Jesus. And I'm trusting that this instruction tonight as it's coming. We are not just going to dismiss it. But God will give us the grace to receive it. In the name of Jesus. Okay, so the first thing that the Lord will be calling our attention to tonight is to take heed lest we fall into sin and temptation. Okay, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 
11 and 12. 11 says, These things happen to them as examples. And it's written to us as warnings. As it calls, for us who the end of the age has come. So that any man who is standing, he should take heed lest he fall. The problem is not that you are standing. I know you are standing. But the problem is that there is possibility of falling. How many people agree with that? Oh, that's possibility of falling. So men who say that once you become a Christian, whatever you do no longer matters. You cannot fall. They have already deceived you. Ah, and when it was so, when you back up at the party, the only bag but on counter we call the leche. Oh, the shubu one ton jenny. You know that that is the doctrine on the the popular doctrine on the streets today in churches today. Oh my God, leche Cody, don't want to burn. You know, pull up by Jolly. Once a man is saved, he's saved forever. Ah, you back up at the party, you're at the bar, la la la. I like to say this to you. Ah, my first child, if you want. That God has no permanent seat. For anybody who ignores his heritage in Christ, for that point for that And I like you to know, I'm that nobody, no matter how spiritual. Grows beyond temptation. Why tempt why why temptation is still very real? All of us we need to be careful. So that we are not going to fall into that temptation, into that sin. The book of Hebrew chapter 3 and verse 13. It says we should not we should not be, we should be careful only and in that case and, uh, so that we are not going to fall into the error of thinking that sin is no longer harmful we should not fall into the deceitfulness of sin and some people are already already working in that danger now and when you come out here in your name we buy you know because because of the grace of God and the of your and the things that happened to to Bible saints in the Old Testament and immediately after the experience of Pentecost Pentecost is not happening to us as it were we are beginning to take the grace of God for granted do you know that if God will repeat the experience of Acts chapter 5 what is where Ananias and Sapphira fell down and died because of because of the dishonesty of their testimony. Do you know that if God will repeat that experience in several of our churches today, we will have so many people to bury on Sunday. Am I correct? Okay, so we have to be very careful that to think that sin is no longer harmful. And so we have to take heed because for as long as you are still alive in the flesh temptation is real and sin is still very potent. I like you to know that several of us are not as privileged. Perhaps 
when compared with the apostles who follow Jesus in the flesh, they have the privilege of working with Jesus and Jesus laying hands on them. And yet, some of these men still fell into temptation. By this, by the Holy Spirit is telling us, if it happens to them, it can happen to us. Okay, so we should take heed lest we fall. And like I said to you, the problem is not in your standing now. The problem is the careless assumption that you cannot fall simply because you are standing. And once you sleep into that assumption, once you once you believe that because you are standing now you cannot fall. Very soon, like that man will still find himself on the floor. You know I I pastor I pastor youth and singles. Every I'm counseling them, especially the engaged ones. I'm telling them. If you think you are a spiritual brother. And you cannot be tempted to fall into sexual sin. You will fall. And they will look at me. Pastor Femi, what, what are you saying? Some of them who took my instruction like it actually fell. And some of them were some of the people who fell are actually one of they are very they are one of my very spiritual very spiritual children you know, you know the reason they fell was not because they were not spiritual Excuse me. i hope you know that a man can be spiritual and still fall if he's careless. When they, when they come back crying to me, it was not because they were not spiritual. It was not because they wanted to even do it. But because they were careless with that sister. And so they fall. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 24. It says God who is able to keep you. God who is able to keep us from falling. I pray that that God will keep us in the name of Jesus. I pray God will keep us from falling in the name of Jesus. But you see, for God to hear that prayer, you have to take it. Number two thing I want to call your attention to tonight is that you have to take heed of your ministry. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Apostle Paul said, Say to Archippus, Apostle Paul, we bless of Archippus to take heed of the ministry that he has received from the Lord. Let him pay careful attention to the ministry that he has received from the Lord. Let him be careful of the ministry that he has received from the Lord. And I'm asking myself, a man who has already received the ministry from God, why will that man need to pay attention again? I actually think that 
A man that need to take it is a man who wants to receive it. Um, a man like Baba Ya, and it only lasts a day. So that any time she fell by she, no she. You know when Elijah was about to go. Ah, in your mind, when you bat here, Elijah, he offered to have a big boat. He asked ask Elijah. Oh, be Elisha. What exactly do you want now that you are following me around? He no go at all. Fell by it of internet. Me can't carry. He said, Baba, just give me. Double portion of your anointing. Ah, oh, ne Baba, he shall come and jump down and he can't fit for me. And Elijah said, "Well, it's up to you." Ah, Elijah, we must pay all our money. If you can pay attention, till Baba the case, if you can take heed as I go, Baba the case, I'll be more till now. I think such men are the people that we should give that instruction. Ah, more of you and when you're bad, one in that you buy, you know, I share you more. When Jesus was about to leave, ni bati Jesus to fell law in Luke twenty four forty nine. Then no way, look or he can in any old go and wait, go and wait. Only I Lord do no until you are in. You until you are in deal with power from on high. So that instruction is very important to them. And you know the problem with that instruction is that Jesus didn't tell them how long they are going to wait. So if he says, "Go and wait, go and wait in five days, I will show up." Go and wait in ten days, I will show up. You know there are several details that were not given in the scriptures. Maybe some people waited for five, two, three, four, five days, and they just were, I'm tired of waiting. I can't. And you say my market is suffering, my 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 work is suffering. In fact, I'm going back to fishing. Some people paid carefully, they took it and waited. Then the Lord showed up. Then the Lord showed up. So for those people, it is important for them to receive the instruction of take heed. Ah, if you know when you are bad, oh she bad. If you want that bad, run you be a case. Ah, but when a man has received it, so man be bad. Yeah, you are bad. I'm asking myself. What will a man take heed again? He don't tell me. I took a case. Ah, but let me. Point your attention to some two brothers in the scripture, some two men in the scriptures. They can talk and rest here and when you are magic on you, be belly. They actually received it, but they lost it. Ah, Lord, that one by share and share and show. Mama, to so I know you know the scriptures of Romans eleven twenty nine. Mama, that you be oh my way, mama, no no way. Yeah, you are for the gift of God upon a man is. Is not without repentance. That when God gives a man, He doesn't take it back from a man. Well, while that is true, I don't tell you that the Lord may not take it back from a man. But the man in his carelessness may lose it. Am I correct? The man in his carelessness Carelessness may forfeit it. One of those men is Judas. You know he was one of the apostolic band. He had the unique privilege of Jesus laying hands on him. He went out when the Lord commissioned them in Luke 10. And they Back with testimony of of Satan falling for them. You remember that story. Once you find that one, but you know you can't hear me. I'm not terrible for one show. Not he. Judas probably casted out the devils. Ah, uh, Judas, Lord, you don't have to Lord, you only have me. Should you die? Probably Judas lays his hand on the sick and they were healed. Oh, she, she, Judas, you open your word and your eyes and I want to see ya. And Judas began to sleep into the assumption that ah, uh, Judas, oh, bless you, never pay. Once a man begins to perform miracle, then that man cannot fall again. Ah, oh, that man cannot fall again. It looked like. When the anointing of God begins to work in the life of a man, then that man cannot sleep and fall again. 
Judah didn't take the instruction of take it very seriously. Judah si ko ba oro yan ju pe ki esara ko ba si pataki si koko. But let's see what happens to Peter said concerning Judas in Acts chapter 1 and verse 25. Yeah, ka wa wo unte apostle de Peter to so nipa Judas inu we sha won apostle ori kini. He is please let another take it. Oni ko re ki elomiran ki o ba. Let another take his apostleship from him. Oni ke elomiran ko ba o ya apostle re because he has turned aside to go to where he wants to go. Nitori bo ti yan lati lo si bi ti o lo. I'm praying for some Somebody this evening. That you are not going to fall and become a shadow of yourself in God. The second person I want to call your attention to is this. And the cage is his name is called Brother Demas. He is one of He is one of the exciting personality of New Testament. One of the close associates of Apostle Paul. That Paul had commended very greatly. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. Neno we Timothy ke jori kare ase ke wa. Paul said concerning Demas. Ah Paul u so ni pa Demas. Demas has departed from me. Oh, ne Demas, oh, he come is here, and he has gone back to the world. Oh, the bad as you know, I hear. Paul was specific enough to tell us where Demas went. Hello, ah, Paul, oh, oh, so I never take a bit of Demas, oh no. You know that Paul. Often will send his ashes here. He will send them on errand to several churches. Oh my God! Oh my Lord! What are you doing? She share. Oh my Lord! What are you doing? So, so boy, this Paul said, "Demas has departed from me, or has left me, and it's not specific. We are not sure what happened to Demas." So my dear brother said, "Ah, Demas, what he, what he feel me still? Oh, go still out of me. Ah, we need more big pataki jolo." And I'm asking myself, "Oh, be a ramilere." If a man has worked with Apostle Paul very well, and he's a very close associate of Paul, Paul are giving him good recommendation earlier. Does it mean that the descendant of Paul was faulty when he was giving those recommendations? Can we say that Paul didn't know Brother Demas very well before he gave that recommendation? No, I don't think so. Because actually, the standing of a man is dependent on him. Can I say this to you? That Demas may have sat very well under Paul. Ah, Papa Edema, oh, till the she she no she da 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 ni abe. It might just be that he didn't take this instruction and warning that Paul gave to him to take it. Oh, she she go jabe ko ka re nyaju ko ka si ele to jabe abu. That a man is serving well. That the man is doing well in ministry now. Does not, does not mean that the possibility or the probability of a man falling is not there. I read, I read stories of men who had preached the gospel, men who had served the Lord for 10, 20, 30 years. Suddenly. They will just turn back and begin to discredit the gospel that they have preached with their lives. Um, um, I'm a student of apologetics. And so, every time, I mean, that I, I watch, read a book, watch a video of Christian debates with atheists. I discovered that several people coming to debate against Christianity are men who have preached the gospel. Ah, moja. Oh my God, God, you are apologetics. Nibaki, but you are very angry. Nio. Tojabe, one fiora, we are. 
pelu awon to se pe ko si olorun mo ri pe opolopo ka se di si olorun ye ma ti awon to je christian itele take heed of the ministry that you have received from the lord ki e sara lori se ran se to ti gba lowo oluwa maybe your ministry is becoming burdensome is becoming is becoming heavy for you to continue bo yo se se ko je se ran se yan ko ti ma ja eru wo to nwo olorun lati te si wajo maybe you've been at your station for a very long time bo yo ti wa ni bi se o tin se se ran se fun opolopo and you are not seeing the fruit of your ministry oh si ri e so se ran se yi ko ma fara won maybe what you are seeing is blister instead of fruits aboya opolopo n to nri o je gaga bi epo kin se so and you already thinking of dumping that ministry to go and look for some other things to do aboya ti won ro no lati fi se ran se yan sile ko lo wa nkan mi ran se i am giving you the instruction this evening by the holy spirit that please take it of the minister you have received from the lord yes sir i know the shana shadow tiba no one know can i say to you that yeah well let's have one pair the first thing that you should apply your heart to in ministry oh i got the good of your caressing in the shana share is not just fruits can you say so The Lord want us to be fruitful. Lord, it all a lot of fake ya so e so. But the first thing that God wants you to pay attention to his ministry is faithfulness. So go on, go go to a lot of fake o ki e sinu ne se ran se, ohun ni je Olohun to. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2. Ah, iwe Corinthians kini ori kan ya sai keji. Says it is required of stewards. Oh, we be am be re lowo iri. They must be faithful. Can I say this to you? Ya mo le so le fun o. Faithfulness is itself a fruit that God is looking from us. So even if you think your district of Asia has forgotten you. To ba ti le ro pe alako so agbegbe yin o ti gbagbe re. Even if you think your general of Asia has forgotten you. To ba ro pe alako so agba o ti gbagbe re. The Lord who entrusted that ministry to you. Olorun to fi se ran se yan le olowo has not forgotten you. Ko i ti gbagbe re. You sure you should please be faithful with that ministry. O ni lati je olohun to ni ni se ran se na. I want rise I want write a story on one of the mission agency web site amo ka itan kan ninu awon ile ise ran se tun won tan rere kale he said well we are we are recruiting missionaries to go and serve on the mission field oni an gba awon missionary awon ajin rere ton lo ka kiri an gba awon baye but we are not looking for people who will who will see fruits who will see fruits as the reason why they want to stay we are looking for people who just want to labor on whether there is fruit or not ah o fi awon eniyan to je pe won kan wa e so pe ni tori idi ton se fe si se niyan that's a very difficult thing to do je pe won ma so lo ko ta ya fruit na wa work am i correct o re pe nkan yo ja un to soro ni tori pe gbogbo ala won wa e so ninu se wa william kare went to india as missionary ah william kare to andaru kan o lo si orilede india gaga ni won ni wa so ni there for seven years o wa ni be fun odun meje not one single convert go see and you and the kankan show show the mission who sent him to india from from britain said wo ogba ni ma bo ni teacher ojo ba ye se awon tun won ran lo awon tun won ran lo si si india won ni ma pada bon le come back home if you the work cannot be done there said man said i want to wait some more i want to wait some more ah ara ko ni wa wi pe mo se fe duro die si I don't know I do see went to Burma seven years there was no single convert Ah that when I do a person oh no see Burma for the do me dey James and Mary Moffat went to South Africa for seven years no convert you can go google them up Ah I don't know James and you want that go but they all waited for no me dey concern you can go have good news for you so ba mo ni iroyin rere ko by the time By the time they ended their ministry in all of those nations, Nigba ti won pari ise ran se won ni awon orilede gbogbo ta daruko ti won lo yi. Lord did mighty things through their ministry. Oluwa se unla ni pa ise ran se. I'm praying for somebody under the sound of my voice tonight. Mo ngba adura fun ene to ngbo o mi ni asale ye. God will give you the grace to be faithful. Oluwa yo fun olori ofe lati jo lohun ton. I like to tell you. Mo fe so fun 
that the ministry that you have in this mission is not from your general overseer it's not from your pastor God just used them to give it to you Paul said Take heed of the ministry he has received from Paul. Is that what he said? Like, no, okay, the Sarah. ministry he has received from the Lord. Okay, Sarah. So, so, if your focus is your pastor, you will soon give up. Oh, 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 my first, my first five years, I served as a missionary on the field, somewhere in the north. Oh, no, man, I'm going to go to the north. I'm going to go to the north. I'm going to go to And any time we are discouraged, any time we are frustrated on the field and all of that, and we are looking for people to blame. And if I keep that, I'm going to go back to the north. I'm going to go to the north. I'm going to go to the north. I'm going we blame our general overseer. We blame our head of ministry. We blame our senior pastors. Uh, 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 and they just come to abandon us in the field. In fact, at the Lagos now, one people come bad, one come one come pa, one come mutual sins. I die. I die. I want to die. I die. I want to die. I want to die. I want to die. I want to die. Especially if one of us travel to the, if one of us travel from the field to Lagos. If they go to the headquarters church and they see pastors the way they are shining with their suit and all of that, and they bring back that report, we'll get angry again. Some of us will even threaten. In fact, we will leave this mission field now. But you see, let me tell you the other side of it. The day somebody will remember us and bless us with money. You know we don't remember the overseer. Because, well, the Lord is faithful. God knows that God knows that I'm faithful in this world. In fact, some of us is even the general overseer who gave that man to send us money. Gave, gave him the contact. Some of us is our pastor that we are blaming. Uh -huh. That instructed that man to send us the money. Uh -huh. But because they didn't tell us, they didn't tell us. We look for somebody to blame. I would like to tell you that you will have to take heed to the ministry that you have received from the Lord. Number three, you will have to take heed of spiritual lukewarmness. You know, Revelation 3 and verse 15. It says, I wish you are cold, you are either cold or hot. But you are lukewarm. And you know when I read that, I am saying to myself, at least when a man is lukewarm, it's better than a man that is cold. Okay. <laughs> and it took me quite a while to see what God is pointing my attention to in that passage. Several years ago. Do you know that when a man becomes lukewarm, the probability for him to become cold is higher than for him to become hot. Do you agree with me? Uh, Good, good, you got it. <laughs> and so you see, a stage of lukewarmness is a very dangerous place. A state of backsliding is a dangerous thing. And you know the problem is that if you go and read that Revelation chapter 3 verse say, I know your works. That's the first thing he said that concerning that church. I know your works. That means 
It's possible we are seeing some measure of activities in the life of a brother or a sister, but he's still already in the backsliding stage. To be lukewarm is not is not a it's not an event. It's not it's not a state, but a process. A process, a process that happened. Gradually but progressively. So when a man start to backslid, you may not notice that brother in church or that sister in church. Especially if it's a man that is very active. A man that likes to jump from here to there. And the, the problem is that he might just be using the of those who to cover up his state of backsliding. So backsliding starts from the heart. And he progresses into your spiritual devotion. If you will agree with me that some of the things that you were doing before, you are beginning to lose grip on them now. Your heart is not warm with your private devotion again. Even though you are still singing in the choir, do you know that it is possible for a man to be preaching on the pulpit. And he's already backsliding in his state of heart with the Lord. Several times when we are looking at the outward appearance, God is looking at the heart. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. The book of God says, You should wash your heart, diligently guard your heart. Because out of your heart flood the issues of life. In Samuel 4 Samuel chapter 16. God asked Samuel to go and anoint for him a king in the house of Jesse. And when Samuel got there, the first man that came out was impressive in his look. He was tall, he was huge. And Samuel concluded. This is likely to be the king of Israel. Remember that Samuel chapter 3 and verse 20. The, the scripture has command, commended Samuel as a man whose word never falls to the ground. Samuel was a first class prophet, a man with precision. Samuel but because he concentrated on the outward appearance, Samuel missed it for the first time. Can I ask you, brother? Can I ask you, sister? Who are you deceiving with your appearance? Are you beginning to deceive your pastor? Because of your look. Sister. Brother, who are you deceiving with your activities? Are you beginning to deceive the brethren that it is okay with you? When it is actually not okay. I hope 
you are not deceiving the church with your emergency consecration now. You actually don't have a private prayer life. You yourself, you know it. I want to know that. I'm not paying. Oh, ni a koko a dry. That guy just paid. You are not on the map. When you are invited, when you are called, when your name appears on the roster to come and lead prayers in church. So my name, but I'm not paying. I'm not paying. You are doing a lot of gymnastic and some massaging and praying in tongues only to confuse the brethren that your prayer life is hot in the secret place. But you are a backslider. And you need to ask for grace tonight. You have to know that deceiving the brethren or the pastor will not help you. Because your inner life is already perforated with sin. I have a brother who works with me like that several years ago. One of my very close associates. I love to give him prayer when he's gifted in praying. My wife will say, even if you are not interested in prayer, if your prayer life is dead, if that brother pray, if that brother leads prayer, you will wake up in your prayer life. I have a brother who was gifted in praying. I have a brother who I have a I have a I have a brother who was gifted in I he just sent me a test. That's what please remove me from that remove my name from that list. I said, oh God, what happened now? He said, when we finish the retreat, I'll come and talk with you. I said, oh God, what happened now? And after that retreat, I engage him in a private and personal discussion. Out of his carelessness, the brother has backslidden terribly. Now, can I say this to you? It may not look like a big problem now. You know, when you switch up a fan, when the power source is disconnected, you notice that the fan is still rolling. Excuse me. Is it immediately you shut down the fan that the blade stops? Is it immediately? Your tongue may not cease now. Uh, uh, am, I, am I correct? So, if you are testing that you are still strong and vibrant because of your tongue, you are missing it. If you think that because people are still falling under your anointing, it still doesn't matter how your secret life is. Then you are walking on danger ground. I hope you know that long after the Navy has repented from their sin. The man who preached to the Navy has not repented from his own. Am I correct? The man who preached to the Navy. Prophet Jonah. After that, the whole town has repented. The man who preached that message was still struggling with unforgiveness in his own heart. Even though his message brought revival to the whole city. He loved is much more important about you 
before your ministry. Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. Do not be slothful in business. But be vibrant in the spirit, serving the Lord. If you notice, if you notice that you are beginning to struggle with your private and personal devotion, your Bible reading, your prayer life, your prayer life, if you are beginning to notice that the sin that you were overcoming several years ago you are becoming attractive to those sins again brother you need to cry even though that may not be obvious to everybody in church now number four number 14 that the Lord is calling our attention to tonight. Oh, to take care, to take heed of yourself, your own self. The, the, a man's is his biggest challenge when it comes to following the Lord. In discipleship process, the first interest that you need to deal with is self. So a man must learn to overcome self first. Good. A man must learn to deal with himself first. Romans 13 and verse 14 says we should clothe yourself, we should clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus. And not make provision for the flesh. When you begin to pump when you begin to gratify your flesh when you begin to make yourself provision for self ok so the first thing that we need to do is to overcome ourselves. A songwriter says, So you will need to first save yourself from yourself. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16. Paul said to Timothy, Watch your life. Watch your life and your doctrine. Watch your life. Because if you do, you are not only going to save yourself, you are going to save your hearers. Jesus took his three disciples as he was running off his ministry to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And he asked them to watch with him. He asked them to pray with him just for one hour. You know what happened? They slept. The same thing that this instructor is giving to us. Jesus said to them, Jesus said, Watch and pray. So that you will not fall into temptation. Excuse me. Did they watch? When Jesus asked them to pray, it was not because of himself, it was because of 
It was because of them. Why their prayers may offer a little bit of comfort to Jesus during that hour. is a whole lot of help to them. But Jesus even made an excuse or probably tell them the source of their problem. Said, well, I know the spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. So, as, as disciple of Jesus, we must learn to carry our cross and follow Jesus every day. Not making provision for self. I have said to my to my people that anytime you are finding an excuse not to do something, there has always been an excuse for you. Am I correct? If you are looking for an excuse not to come to church, you will see one. If you are looking for an excuse not to serve, you will see one. If you are looking for an excuse not to give, you will see one. If you are looking for an excuse not to Actually, not at all. For a man who is working in self, for a man who is working in the flesh, everything will be a struggle to him. First Corinthians chapter three, verse verse one and two. Paul said, "I cannot address you as spiritual." But as babes in Christ. Because in your midst, they are still fighting, they are still quarreling, and there are so much pettiness in your midst. And you are not spiritual at all. Okay, so to walk in flesh is not to be spiritual. And to be carnally minded is death. Romans chapter 8 and verse 8. The Holy Spirit gave us an absolute statement in that verse. Those who are led by their sinful nature cannot please God. Okay, so I'd like to say to you today, you will need to take heed of yourself so that yourself will not compromise with the world and with Satan to pull you down to pull you down okay, quickly before we pray the fifth thing that God is calling our attention to is to take heed of the whole system First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Do not love the world. And the things that are in the world is a very tough thing for us today. John 15 and verse 19. Jesus said, if you belong to the world, the world will have loved you as its own. I have chosen you from the world. So you don't belong to the world. And how are we going to survive that? That we are in the world. And yet we are not of the world. But I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will help us tonight. In the name of Jesus. James chapter 4 and verse 4. 
Don't you know that friendship with the world is an enmity with God? Okay. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. He went Rome, Holy Kaji, Lysa, Kaji. He says, Do not be conformed to the world. Only a match at that I am for my yeah, but with the renewing of your mind, only show my yeah, you will have to be transformed. Only care paradise. The world is closing on on us. I yeah, oh, don't touch some of Gradually but progressively now. Ah, dear, dear, dear. This is entirely about you. You will see the manifestation of the world system around us. And that is why for several of us it's becoming difficult for us to separate ourselves from the world. Before this time, we felt that we are safe in church. So all of us are warming ourselves. We are, we, are, we are congregating in church. We are meeting in church. We are running to church. We are keeping ourselves warm in church because we don't want to be corrupted with the world system. But even the church is becoming open up to all of those tendencies from the world system. The music of the world. The fashion of the world. The order of the world. You know in Matthew, in Mark chapter 10 from verse 42 to 45. You know where Mark or Rika I say, Kaji, then you go, you see, can on the disciple of Jesus we are fighting among themselves. About who is the greatest? Okay. And Jesus in verse 44 says, Yes, you know, I say, can you let go you be? The men in the world, the masters of the world, lord it over their people. And when they are not here, one of my job, one of my shackles, so Lord, I'm winning. It should not be so among you. Go, 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 rebel, okay. He says he who wants to be greater must be the servant of all. So we are now bringing the idea of the success in the world to church now. I want more. I want. We are bringing the leadership style of the church of the world into church now. I want more. We want to share. We want to share. We to share. We want to share. We want to share. We want to share. We want to share. to to share. We to but in today's church, actually, we can run our church without the Holy Spirit for one year, and we will not know it. So we are going to see it. In Acts chapter 15 and verse 28, the first Jerusalem council, it says, Good to us, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. Today, we do things that seems good to us, but not good to the Holy Spirit. The issue is that we don't even know the mind of the Holy Spirit concerning that matter. Um, by the privilege I have, I sit with. Several of our leaders, when we are making decisions in church, maybe maybe we are entrusting responsibility to some of our brethren. Maybe we are taking critical decisions. And I look at 
I look at the factors that we considered a man crazy, a monte, a man crazy, to take that decision. And I'm asking myself, if the opposed to we take this decision that yeah, we are taking now, is this what they are going to consider? You know, men become leaders in church today. Not because they are with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. The apostle, apostle said, select some men from among you that are filled with Holy Spirit and with wisdom so that we can give them this responsibility. In church today, that's not what we look at. And we are going to begin to teach our people that when they are running their own personal life, they don't even need to bring God into that matter. God must not be their consideration. For as long as it is good in their eyes, it is okay, they can go ahead with it. You know, in the revival of late 70s and early 80s, and in a shoddy, I want all of us bothered about what the will of the Lord is. When a man wants to take employment, the first thing he asks is not, is not whether well the the corporation or the bank is a blue ship bank or is a mega corporation. The, the the first consideration is, is this the will of the Lord for me? When a sister wants to get married, he wants to, he wants, she wants to know, is this the will of the Lord for me? Even pastors are teaching that, no, what is important is not the Lord again. Uh, in I'm all of those matters. matters. So as long as, long as it is good, you are fine with it. Can I say this to you today? First John verse First John 217. It says. Everything in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, are not from the Father. And that he who does the will of God abides forever. So, no matter what the world is offering us today, it cannot be compared to what God has already given to us. Finally, I just share this and we close so that we can pray together. I like to tell you to take heed of the second coming of the Lord. You know, anytime we are talking about the second coming of the Lord, anytime we are talking about eternity, we think that is something that is still very far away. And so we still think we have plenty of time to prepare. We are allowed to say this to you today. If you are not ready for the second coming of Jesus today, you are not ready at all. You know for a sister and a brother that is preparing for their wedding. Second coming of Jesus is the last thing on their mind. Uh, Am I correct? If because Jesus will come, let me do my marriage first. Uh, and the book of Luke says that just as in the days of Noah, so it will be when this other man is coming. He will be going to market, market. Yes. they will be buying and selling, and, when you are lost, you are and they will be giving him marriage, then the Lord will come. Okay, Mark 13 and verse 33. Watch and pray. 
Because you don't know the time and the hour. Do you know that it is a costly assumption for us? It's a costly assumption for us. For that if Jesus comes now as we are in this hall all of us will go with Jesus how much is the costly assumption it is and if a man is seated in this hall a brother is seated in this hall you know that you are not sure you are disconnected with Jesus. Luke 21 and verse 34. He says, take heed. So that a man will not be brought down with a lot of dissipation, drunkenness, and cares of this world when the Lord will come. Okay, several of us are already bogged down with the cares of this world. We are already bogged down with several dissipations. Sometimes I go and to my church. That I'm not living for my children. I'm not living for my family. That's, a, that's, that's the reason why I'm, that's not the reason why I'm alive. If I drop there today, my children will move on with their life. Your children will move on with their life. My children just become beneficiary of my living for the Lord. So, even in carrying the burden of your children it must not break your focus of eternity even in becoming whatever you want to become people say well, well, we must not be heavenly conscious and be earthly useless but you see, Jerry, even the Bible says, What shall it profit a man? becoming useless now. We guarantee you heaven. I think it is safer. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. Paul said, May I never boast in anything except in the cross of Jesus. Through whom I'm crucified to the world and the world is crucified to me. As for me, I'm useless to this world and the world is not interested in me again. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9 says, The Lord is not slow concerning his promises of coming. Know, for over 2,000 years, we have been shouting. In fact, Paul actually thought that the Lord will come in his own time. He said, we, who are alive. So Paul was seeing himself in that picture. He said, so Paul was seeing himself in that picture. And 2,000 years after we are still here, we are still here. So he might look like you and I have a whole lot of time to prepare for eternity. Take heed. I'm saying to you tonight that if you are not ready today, you are not ready at all. I want us to stand up as we pray together. Choir, you will need to help me. With this song. Give me the grace to follow. 
abundant grace to give me the grace to your grace is enough. Can you sing it? Give me the grace to follow. I want grace to follow. Give me the grace. 